WSO2 and blue chip, what do we bring? Uh, today, WSO2 is one of the leading organizations when you talk about uh, digital, and they will be sharing some of the stories uh, with us. Uh, we're expecting someone also from one of the local banks here to also share some of those insights. <laughs> Um, and why blue chip? You will see I put the orange, which is WSU2, and the blue, which is blue chip. Uh, WSU2 is big. They have got all of this platform. What value do we add? We are, first of all, a services organization. We are very, extremely big on services. We've got lots of engineers. Out, out of the over 300 people that I, <laughs> I told you about, 95% of them are core technical people. Only very few of our staff are probably not technical. We are also very big on delivery. We are able uh, to help you get that particular thing done. One thing that stands out is that we will stay on it. We will stay on it until that problem is solved. Thank you for coming out today. Um, lovely seeing you all here. Um, it was, it's really good that, you know, I've seen a massive turnout already. It's really, really heartening to see. We're very excited. Uh, this is our first event in Nigeria, so we're very excited. So giving a very high level thing of WSO2, we were founded in 2005. Um, our two founders, um, Dr. Sanjay Viravarna and Dr. Paul Fremantle, they met at IBM. Um, and, and they decided, you know, let's, let's create a product, basically, right? So we were found in 2005. We were nearly 19 years old going into next year. Um, we have a global presence. So we're headquartered in the U.S., but the majority of our team um, and our R&D teams are based out of Sri Lanka. All right, we're not Indians. Um, we're Sri Lankans. Uh, very different. Right? So um, the majority of us, me, Vidra, and Jahan, uh, we're all based out of Sri Lanka. So we, we've got a global presence. We've got multiple offices across the board, um, Dubai, Mumbai, uh, London, and so forth as well. <coughs> um, we've got 900 plus employees. If you see 45% of that in engineering, because we're very, whilst Blue Chip said, you know, we're a services company, WSO2 is product company, right? So a lot of our team is in engineering, in R&D. If you're looking to build a platform yourself, as I said, uh, you obviously need the software components to build that platform. Um, so we provide you with um, technology for your digital platform, which you can use uh, in API management, integration, and identity and access management. So these software components or the technology components, you can run it yourself. You can use it as a private cloud offering from us. Um, or you can actually use it in an uh, infrastructure as a service uh, of your choice. Um, so first of all, obviously you need a, a very good API management solution because APIs really are the key things that power the digital experiences that you build. So in this uh, space, we have two products that we offer. WS2 API Manager is our most popular product. A lot of um, uh, our customers use this. Um, this software can be run, you know, you can run it uh, yourself or we offer it as a managed services offering as well as a private cloud offering for you. So let me give you a little bit more details about API Manager. As I said, this is our most popular product. Uh, so that it's being used by a lot of our customers. Um, and um, we'd like to call this a full lifecycle management API, uh, API management platform. Um, so what this is, is a software that can run on-prem, on the cloud, or in the hybrid mode, where you can um, basically place certain components of this platform um, on the cloud and have certain components uh, on on-prem on as well if you like. Um, so this, uh, this uh, supports the full lifecycle API management. Um, it takes care of uh, securing APIs, uh, uh, you know, using um, uh, techniques like O2, enforcing authorization rules, access policies, so on and so forth. Um, and the, the product also has um, portals for API design and consumption. 
Um, it has approval workflows for governance uh, for API publishing and subscri uh, subscription. So you can um, you can easily manage how you want to uh, do these things. And as well as the portals allow you to easily discover the digital assets or the APIs that your teams create. So the portals allow you to actually even share some of these digital assets across your teams so that it encourages reuse amongst the teams. Um, so WSO2, the relationship dates back to um, 2019. We have two engagements with WSO2, with our UK office, that's First Bank UK, and now with the main First Bank group. Let me quickly talk about First Bank UK because that's actually matured. Um, so we're using the implementation and it has actually gone live since 2019, but we're using it for this follow use cases. Um, we're using it to achieve the open banking um, requirement in UK. You know, it's that actually highly regulated PSD2. So we're actually using that to achieve that in UK uh, with the First Bank UK, very highly regulated. And I think from the experience, they made the implementation simple. They actually have an open banking template as part of the product line lineup that we have. Secondly, we're using it to also use it for hybrid implementation um, um, in UK. And what I mean by that is that we have the ERP, SAP ERP in the cloud, and then it is the WSO2 that we're actually using it to do the integration with the on-premise um, Fina, no, Flexcube. The core banking operation is actually Flexcoop in there. Um, we're actually using that for SAP and some other cloud services. So it actually make us um, make the um, cloud implementation design easier. We're also using it as an ESB in UK. Now the integration with Finaco and as well with other internal systems is actually passing through it. So it makes it easier based on the template that we do have in there. So those are the three use cases that um, we're using WSO2 in there. I've had experience with other platforms from the OEMs, um, from the Oracle, from Microsoft, from um, IBM. Um, but seeing what they have here seems quite, quite easy for them to be able to. One other thing that the UK also, also affirmed to is that um, for those integration efforts and why their staff are able to use it, because they've already got some plugins, templates, um, sample codes from their own community. They actually have a thriving community. Right. And what's unique about WSO2's uh, proposition in this space is that uh, we just don't support a single level of organization, but we can actually uh, support multiple uh, levels of organization. So you can have a hierarchy of organizations. So there are uh, advanced use cases where this is required, right? Uh, so typically, if there is like a, a reseller who is selling your product uh, to customers, your indirect customers, so you would want to sometimes model these organizations in this way. So that's what you see in the right-hand side here. Uh, as well as like there can be global organizations like you know um, uh, global banks where there is a headquarters and then there are regional uh, offices so then if you want to govern your IT uh, centrally then you would want to go for this kind of a model where you have the global uh, office and then you have the regions underneath them and finally uh, talk about API access management so as I said, uh, this is basically uh, devices or clients uh, that are calling APIs. So here the, the popular standard OAuth 2, OpenID Connect. So if you are from a technical background, I think uh, you probably know, all, uh, know these terms already. So we are fully compliant with OAuth 2, OpenID Connect, even some of the advanced OAuth 2 profiles like MTLS client auth and certificate bound access token, uh, DPOP, device authorization, so we are fully compliant. And more recently, we've also become compliant with uh, uh, some of the financial, um, some of the BFSI related OpenID Connect standards like FAPI baseline and FAPI advanced and uh, pushed authorization request and JAM uh, specifications. So this is a different customer, again, financial industry. Uh, this is from UK. Uh, so this is uh, different from Time Bank because this is a, a B2B customer. So they are an investment firm and they have different type of, uh, uh, you know, organizations that we, they work with. They have advisors, clients, and then the customers. So basically, uh, since they are B2B, 
uh, one of their main requirements was to be able to integrate with the customer's identity provider, right? Uh, so the customers already have their identities in their organization's identity provider. So they need to be able to easily onboard those identity providers into the platform. So then the final example I took for Standard Chartered, uh, so stand, because it's a well-known uh, brand, as well as Standard Chartered uses WSO2 for purely for API management. So they don't manage users uh, within the WSO2 identity server, but all their uh, internal APIs globally are secured by WSO2 identity server. So all the business units that Standard Chartered has expose APIs, and those APIs are secured by identity server, but uh, they have different gateways that they use, and those gateways integrate uh, with the WSO2 identity server. The security space itself is you know, vast, and IAM itself is also quite large, and there are different vendors focusing on different areas, but what we really focus is on building the right user experience, and IAM becomes a key component in building the right user experience. So in order to build that right user experience and a delightful user experience, you need, need to have a flexible platform where you can extend um, and you know, build that right user experience, be it your customers, your business partners, or your employees. Everyone deserves the right user experience. So that's what we really thrive for. You might be uh, already practicing uh, API management as, a, as an organization, and you may have already APIs developed. Um, as a first step, I think you can you can um, basically, uh, if from a technology point of view, um, like I, if you if you remember the slide that I put on uh, about the different components that make up the API manager, uh, from a technology point of view, we allow you to start very small by having a single server that can do everything for you, meaning the gateway, the portals, and everything can be run in a single server. I've seen that most of the people here are from banks and for new institutions that are just coming up, you have a solution that is fit for purpose. Okay, um, and I'm excited with what I've heard today. So um, most of the fintechs that we have out there, they are interested in partnership and of course one key thing that we do together is leveraging on API and uh, security of all those APIs is very, very important management of those APIs are very, very key, and this solution seems to be a very good one to meet that purpose. For the API gateway, for me, that's what it is, and PSB, okay? My first question is around subscription. Is it that the, the payment framework is only subscription-based? I pay as I use. Right, the product right now what you get in a license and what you don't, I mean, what you get without a license is the same, which is downloadable on our website. It's free of charge to use, to try it out, right? There's no cost to it. So the, the, the purpose is that, that's why I talked about getting your hands dirty because you're not paying any licensing fees, you get to use the product in and out without any features hidden. There's no hidden, there's nothing hidden on this. You can use the product free of charge. Just go to the website today, download the product, and you can start using the product that you will use in enterprise as well.